Hi, ladies. Hello. Great to see you again. Yes. Jen and I are matching colors. <laughs> Very nice. So welcome, everyone. This is Tone It Up Tuesday. I'm Justine Sanfilippo, health coach, nutritionist, and author of the book, Lose Your Inches Without Losing Your Mind, available at happyhealthypeople.com and Amazon. And I have Jen and Kajenwa here following my program. Um, and they are of Dash Public Relations out on the East Coast. So, ladies, we're in week eight. This week we're going to be talking about cravings, binging, and other foes of losing your inches. And last week we chatted about fitness, and you each had some goals. I think Jen was going to be doing more of the bar uh, method workouts and building up your stamina. And Kajenwa, you were focusing on the abs and thighs of fitness and in your gym. And also, I know like last time you guys were a little bit got off track just because of life. And so I'd love to hear from each of you, you know, how things are going this week and if things are going a little bit better. Yeah, this week has been so much better. I've really just been paying more attention to everything because I don't want to feel crappy again. And it's been a great week. Um, I've been eating much better. I've been getting much more exercise in and we are back on track. So it's okay to fall off. It happens. We're real people. We're telling you like it is. So don't feel bad if it happens to you. Just get back on and keep on going. <laughs> Love that. That's true. If you get off, it's okay. We're not perfect. We're human. I like the phrase, we're perfectly imperfect. So we're never going to be 100% perfect. <laughs> yeah, though we try, right? Though we try, especially those of you who are out there who are holding down the job or the home front or just managing a lot of things at once, including the kids, the dog, the family. Um, it's, it can be a lot, and pressure can be major, and I think it's, it's uh, thinking through those things and working through them rather than pretending that they don't exist. Exactly, exactly. So how are things for you, uh, Kajeno, this week? So much better. Um, much like Jen, I, I really don't want to feel crappy again. Um, you know, summer is just about getting started. So, um, you know, you, I, I want to feel good. I want to feel good in what I put on, what I wear, how I fit into clothes again. I've got my, uh, my barometer dress, which is a little leopard print dress thingy that I, I check into every now and then to see how things are coming along. And that's kind of how I, how I deal, right? So it's okay to go off the ledge a little bit and then come right back and pull it together. I like that, the barometer dress. So I guess I have barometer jeans. So basically, I got this pair of jeans. I mean, they were cheap. They're not in style. And I got them probably like 15 years ago or something. Anyway, those are the jeans. They also don't, they don't stretch and they don't shrink. So they always stay the same size. So every so often, I'll put them on, make sure they fit. There's been times where they just didn't quite zip anymore. So I knew I had to step things up and be a little bit more diligent. Um, but yeah, I like that. So, you know, if you guys have like a dress that either could be a gold dress or a pair of pants or a swimsuit or, or whatever it is, um, it's nice to have that as a, a bit of an incentive to, to keep going. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I did put on shorts cause it's been very warm this past week. Um, shorts that I had from last year and they were big on me. So that was really exciting because it's not very often you can put those shorts on after the winter and get into them, let alone have them be big. This is true, especially on the East Coast. I mean, you guys have crazy winters. I know I used to live there. And um, there's no reason to, you know, have less clothing on when it's two degrees outside. So that's really wonderful that your shorts are big. And maybe it might be time for some more short shopping soon. I know. We have to get more clients. We're going to need more clothes now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, so this week, um, this week's topic is about cravings and binging, basically stuff that may be old habits, maybe triggers of things. And we touched base a few weeks ago on emotional eating, so that could all be tied in here. So there's always a reason behind cravings, and the most common cravings are sugar, salt, alcohol, uh, and caffeine. For me, I mean, you know, like chocolate. Um, so I was thinking about. Well, there's always a reason for craving. So typically, I found with working with, um, with clients is that if a person's craving sweets, usually it's because they're not eating often enough during the day. There might be like five or six hours of a span between meals. Um, it could be they're not getting enough protein. 
So the body's looking for sugar for its quick energy fix versus protein helps keep it, everything more stable. Um, sometimes it's an emotional craving for the sweets. Like we want sweetness in our lives from other people, other connections like that. Um, I definitely did my share of binging on sweets when I was in unhealthy relationships. Um, and sometimes it's just like we need more water. And sometimes with salt cravings, it's that we need actually more minerals and vitamins. Like we're looking for those um, in, in the foods. And, and so we'll crave like something salty. So I'd like to hear from you guys, like what sort of things you, maybe you've craved before. I know Kajenua used to crave a lot of sweets. Um, maybe something that you craved before and maybe some things that you're craving now. So I've always had my chocolate issue which has subsided greatly. And I actually got pretty sick off of some chocolate that I used to eat, which is kind of a good thing because now I really just, I don't want that at all. Um, but there's, you know, there's one, what is it? The bark thins that I do like with a little scoop of almond butter. And kind of a bad thing is that I discovered cashew milk ice cream. So I found it in chocolate and I do, portion control though because it's a small container it's expensive and it's four servings are in there so i make sure that i count that um i mean good thing it's not that high in fat i mean it's probably honestly less fat than a lot of protein bars i've seen even though i i know it's not nutritionally the same um so those are my things and i'll still go to my cocoa krispies if i really 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 need chocolate <laughs> so i have to be careful with that i am glad that you brought up about salt because i'm not a salt person i i don't really care for chips however there was probably about two or three days throughout this whole time when i found myself wanting to salt things that i normally wouldn't like bread so i would have bread with a little bit of the vegan butter that i have and i just wanted salt on it no idea why so you think that's minerals yeah so we need a certain amount of minerals so the best kind of salt, if you're going to put salt on your foods, is um, a sea salt because they're naturally very, or like a Himalayan sea salt, a Celtic sea salt, anything like that. It's naturally high in minerals. So if you get more of the processed salt, it's sort of stripped of all the minerals and they're, and you're just getting like sodium and it's, it's not as healthy for us. So we do need a certain amount of sodium in our diet because it helps the cells get all the nutrients they need. So the, the cell is like mostly water, it's like 70% water, there's a bit of sodium in there, so there's different like electrolytes in there. So the sodium actually helps the nutrients go in and out of the cell walls. So it is normal to have some. So yes, but what's really cool with cravings is it really helps us listen to our body. So in your case, your body was like, you know what, I need some salt, I probably need some minerals, and you listen to it, and then you had it. So it seems like probably after those few days that craving subsided. And yeah. so one thing to do is like if, again, if, we're, if you're going to be cooking or whatever, it is okay to put a little pinch of sea salt on things. Um, <laughs> even for hydration, like after long sports, like, I mean, yeah, there's Gatorade and stuff. But if you look at there, there's a little bit of sodium in there. So you can just have water and do like a little pinch of sea salt in there and then it'll help hydrate you um, even faster. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, about chocolate, um, totally normal to crave chocolate. Sometimes we crave chocolate, it's really because we want the opposite taste of what we just had. So if we just had like a savory yeah, meal. Yeah, okay, I'm not crazy. No, you're not crazy, it's totally normal. I'm the exact same way. If you have a savory meal, you're automatically gonna crave something sweet afterwards because it's that balance, like that yin and yang mm -hmm. sort of thing. So I'll either have like, I have some sort of carob chips in my pantry in the back, or I have like this really great protein, like chocolate protein powder. Sometimes we'll just have like a scoop like dry because it's just so oh. good. Like it melts <laughs> oh in your mouth. Oh my God, it's, you eat dry protein powder? It's, well, it's the best protein powder in the world. It's um, Muscle Food Labs, the Way Isolate Protein, available at sexynutrition.com. Anyway, um, it's so darn good. So, or sometimes I'll put that with like a little bit of yogurt. So it's kind of like a pudding. It's like a protein. Mm. Ooh, I feel a sponsorship deal coming on. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing you could do to subside cravings is actually just to brush your teeth. Because sometimes we crave something just because we want a different taste in our mouth. So after a meal, if you're like, man, I really want this sweet thing, try brushing your teeth first and then see if you still want it. And then just have a little bit like you're doing already. You're uh, doing the portion control. 
So very good. Um, okay, so Kajenwa, any cravings or anything? So cravings would be um, definitely related to chocolate. Um, I, so, so Stefan had come from Sweden and they have this chocolate, it's called Marabou. And it's like a, you know, like the lint chocolate bars, right? So I don't really do American chocolates. Um, sorry for those of you out there who love the Hershey's. I'm really like about my lint, my Ritter Sport, Toblerone. I really like those beautiful milk chocolates. Um, I probably should think more about dark chocolate because there's a lot of sugar in the milk chocolates. Um, but chocolates with nuts in it, this for me is like total and complete bliss. So, so that was my deal. I just went for it um, because I figured, you know what? I don't normally go and get chocolate out of the food aisle at the grocery store. And this is really like an import thing for me. So I just went for it. Um, luckily, we learned in, in, in episode six that it's okay to, to give in to your hamburger need. And um, that, that red meat craving is, is solid every now and then, um, especially around certain times of the month. You just need that. It's like a sanguine thing almost. You need to, to fulfill that craving. So for me, it's, it can be meat. Um, chocolate, wine for sure. I, um, I definitely, I mean, they know me at the wine store, so that's where I'll be. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's where I'll be. Um, and especially, you know, and for those of you who are kind of, um, you know, who just come from having babies, you, you couldn't drink for a while. So it's almost like that need has been amplified um, sometimes when you've just come off from antibiotics or, or something like that. So. Yeah, so here's an interesting thing about alcohol that, that you brought up. So alcohol breaks down the system as sugar. So I've noticed this in my past. I mean, I, I barely drink now. Like if I have a glass of wine, I'm totally done. <laughs> Just forget about it. Um, that not used, used to not be the case. But since it breaks down as sugar, sometimes we can crave alcohol actually when it's been a long time since we've eaten. So the blood sugar is low. You're like, man, a glass of wine would be so good right now. And plus it'll affect you more when your stomach is completely empty. Um, and the other thing is just sometimes it's like sort of instead of a sweets craving, like we'll crave the alcohol. So, you know, having some here and there is fine. You know, there's antioxidants and all that stuff. It's all about, like with everything, it's all about the portion. And, uh, and you don't want to have like a lot of food with it because it slows down digestion. It all just sort of sits in the stomach area and then you get like the, the alcohol beer gut going so yeah <laughs> so here and there um yeah. another thing i want to touch on with cravings is that a lot of my clients tend to have a lot of snacky cravings after dinner so late at night i mean this is very very common and the reason is it's always fascinating but it's always so simple is that typically this sort of client would have skipped breakfast or like just had coffee you know had a very tiny lunch, and then they get home, they're hungry, maybe they're making dinner, they eat dinner, and then that's when the snack craving hits, and that's because during the whole day they didn't eat enough food. So if you find that you're craving snacks late at night, it's, it's just your body's way of telling you, hey, I really didn't get enough calories today, I didn't get enough nutrition, so now I'm gonna make you crave everything. It's yeah. all gonna be carbs, it's all gonna be sugar, and it's all gonna be bad for you, but this is what I'm gonna do, because that's a quick energy source for me. Oh yeah, that's how it happens in, in New York, and in many places, it's almost a badge of honor how much you didn't eat, right, isn't it? It's, it's like, like the badge of honor. Bad, but yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat a thing. I ate like maybe like 10 almonds and an apple, you know, and you're, you're, you're supposed to be lauded for that type of behavior. And I think a lot of this is unlearning what a lot of us have learned, right? Yes, no, this is true. I mean, I remember working in New York and I mean, I worked for some modeling agencies. I took the models around, hardly any of them ate all day. That's Which where I, met I, you. I know that's where we met so many years ago, like a billion years ago. But like, so the models never ate, and I'm walking them to all of our castings and jobs and things. So I barely ate. I mean, I had some snacks, but like it was gone. Mm -hmm. So I would find I would get home, and I was so hungry. I would eat like everything, and it's just because I was walking all day and barely ate. And then everyone smoked, and yes, I even smoked when I was in New York because you're trying to suppress yeah. the appetite and be so. Yeah. 
and used to smoke in the stairwell. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this horrible cycle. So like Kajenna would just say, it's sort of unlearning past behaviors that no longer serve us and uh, mm -hmm. creating newer, healthier, sustainable behaviors. So if you're craving snacks at night, make sure you have a breakfast, a lunch, probably like an afternoon snack and a dinner, and I guarantee those cravings will go away. So, I have a quick question for you, Justine. Yeah. Um, what about people who are up very late? So for example, like I typically eat dinner around six o'clock, sometimes seven o'clock, and around like 11 o'clock, I'll be starving and I'll go and I'll make some eggs, you know, just some scrambled eggs or something, but I don't go to sleep until one, two o'clock in the morning. And I know that you're not supposed to eat after a certain time, but I don't know if I necessarily follow that, uh, that time pattern. I don't really follow it either. Um, I just listen to my body. So yeah, if I'm going to be up late, um, I mean, I try to get to bed at a decent hour, but sometimes it's like 11 or 12. And, but if you're, if you're so hungry and it's been three or four hours since dinner, then having something just, I mean, eggs are just protein. I would not have any carbs right before bed or like fruit or something. It's cause it's just going to sort of get stored and sit there, but just have some protein, have a couple eggs, have a, you know, a handful of unsalted nuts, something like that, just to sort of mm -hmm. like quiet the stomach and then it's fine to go to sleep. So usually, um, usually that's okay. Great. Good question. All right. So thinking about this coming week, and goals and cravings, or we can even like sort of tack on to what you guys have been working on with just sort of staying on track and the fitness and everything. Uh, what would you each like your baby goals to be? Kojama, you go first. I have to think. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stay with the gym because that for me is really feeling right. Um, I, I would like by graduation, do we have, we have three more weeks until graduation. I'd like by graduation to have a full body, you know, image of something that I'm happy with, that I'm comfortable with, that I say, okay, I'm en route. Um, I'm going to continue drinking water. I'm really satisfied with the way I've handled sugary drinks. It was a real hurdle for me, and I'm, I'm working on that. Um, I did go breadless, and I'll continue to do less bread. Um, but you know, I, I had some pumpernickel this morning. It felt really, really good. And to satiate that for me was everything I needed to satisfy my carb, um, desire, right? So better for me to have one or two slices of pumpernickel with some eggs in the morning than to go au bon pan to get my Danish. So I'm just going to just stay on the gym track and eat better is going to be my goal and really really maintain at that um, 1400 or less calorie mark with working out. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. And how cool that your, your bread cravings have changed. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll have a slice or two of bread, but like pumpernickel, like there's more stuff in it, more satisfying. A great tip too, when you, if you make toast is like spread some avocado on top Yeah. with the eggs the egg and then a little tomato. Oh my God, we're going to have to do some recipes, some <laughs> recipes. Yes, very nice. All right, Miss Jen, have you had time to think? Yes. So I think it's time now that I add another bottle of water to my daily routine. So we're going from two to three, and that was from zero. Um, and, you know, I think I'm going to join you, Kojenwa, in downing the carbs. <laughs> I might be evil this week, but I'm going to try to doubt hey, the carbs. We're Italian. That's, how, that's what we do. We eat the carbs. <laughs> we have to. They're going to kick me out. <laughs> what? Spaghetti sauce and no noodles? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, what are some carbs specifically you think you want to reduce a bit? Oh, bread. I, I got to have bread all the time. Um, with everything I eat, there's always some form of bread associated or rice. Um, so I'm going to try to just narrow that down. Maybe I'll, you know, I'm going to start cutting out maybe like one a day and then maybe by midweek I'll do like two a day because I will kill somebody over my bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So reducing slowly. Okay. And I'm finding that like a soup with a dinner, I have this really cool ca cauliflower, uh, 
cauliflower and broccoli soup that I make and there's hardly anything in it, some olive oil and some, some pepper and some thyme and then you blend this. It's lovely. It's good, good fiber with yeah. meat. Yeah. Cool. All right, good. Well, um, that's week eight. Oh, last little tip I was going to say is that it takes about 20 minutes to feel full. So if people find that they're, um, you know, having cravings, just eat slower. Like enjoy, you know, enjoy the pumpernickel. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoy it. I'm half Italian. I'm half Sicilian, actually. Enjoy it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Okay, so we will touch base next week with week nine, and the whole thing is week 10, so we're almost there. Awesome. All right, thanks, Justine. Have a great week, everyone. All right, you too. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.